Hey everyone, I'm Bill. I'm with Calimoto TV. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Turtle Rock and welcome back the 2010 BMW HP2 Sport. That's right, you guys. Uh, we are out on the ultra rare today, the uh, 2010 HP2 Sport. And um, well, as you guys have seen, uh, I got in a little bit of trouble again on this bike. This bike is the only bike that apparently gets pulled over in the collection. <laughs> Knock on wood. But um, let's see. Let's try to get this thing started up. Not sure why it's not starting. There we go. All right, uh, so we're gonna give you guys uh, a little little ride for you that are new to the channel. You guys may have come over from the RS660, or some of you guys may have come over from the Street Fighter. But uh, this is my 2010 BMW HP2 Sport, which is an ultra rare. So to give you a little backstory about this bike, in uh, about 2008, 2009, and 2010, BMW had to build a race bike for a Boxer Cup in Europe. The Boxer Cup consisted of basically boxers, and uh, well, BMW is known for their boxers, and they wanted to build a full race bike to compete, and like any manufacturer that wants to race what they call a production bike, which this is, they have to make a certain amount of these bikes and sell them for a certain amount. Now, uh, you guys are newer to the channel, you guys probably know this is what happened with and why we have the Ducati V4R. The V4R is the production race bike that BMW, or excuse me, that Ducati wanted to race. They had to sell a certain amount of them. And uh, most of the times manufacturers lose money on these bikes. Now, uh, rumor has it that it costs Ducati approximately 7,000, 70,000, excuse me, $70,000 to build the V4R. But they can only sell it for 40000 or less, of course. So there's restrictions and, and they can only, well, they have to sell at least a certain amount of them. Uh, and their number was 500. Now for BMW in 2010, from the research that I've been able to find is that they were required to build 250 of these motorcycles, uh, which they did and uh, obviously sell them to the public. And there was no requirement for the allocation of where these bikes go. So if they sold 250 in Europe, that was fine. But 62 of the 2010 HP2 Sports made their way to the United States. And uh, this is one of them. So pretty ultra rare to have an HP2 Sport in 100%, well, almost 100% stock form. The previous owner did change a few things. Uh, if you're looking at the mirrors, and if you guys are HP2 guys, you guys know those aren't the correct mirrors. I do have the correct mirrors, but these are uh, mirrors off of a S1000RR. Uh, also, the bike uh, has S1000RR LED blinkers, which is very nice. But uh, outside of that, the bike is completely stock and in, in very good condition. So I found this bike last year and uh, it was down in San Diego. If you guys haven't seen the delivery video, you guys have to check that out. I'll link it up above. But we, uh, I always wanted this bike and in 2010, I remember seeing one of these bikes at San Francisco BMW when I was purchasing my 2009, I believe. Maybe it was a 2011. Uh, no, it was actually my 2010. Sorry, my dates are mixed up because the first time I saw this bike was in 2010 at San Jose BMW. 
and uh, Brian Porto uh, used to race these. Excuse me, it's not Brian. I don't know. My mind's a little foggy today because of the uh, the whole <laughs> incident. But um, anyways, uh, so yeah, so the first time I saw this bike, San Jose BMW, 2010, and I love the bike, but they were like, you know, $35,000, $40,000 new. And I was like, all right, well, I can't, definitely can't afford that. So uh, fast forward to the R9T racer. I love the R9T racer. You guys know that. I just didn't ride it enough. The, the riding position on the R9T racer was so much worse than this bike. Like this bike is actually somewhat comfortable to ride as a sport bike. So the HP2, uh, so the um, HP2 Sport was posted, or a HP2 Sport was posted on uh, Boss Exhaust page, their Instagram page, and I was like, oh my God, I love that bike. I always wanted one of these bikes, and. I started to search for one, and lo and behold, Gary down at BMW San Diego had one up for sale, and I called him a couple days later, and I was like, hey, Gary, I'm interested in a bike you have, and he's like, HP2 Sport, and I was like, how did you know? <laughs> and so I flew down there and uh, looked at it and bought it, and well, a couple weeks later, me and Bogner, we traveled down and actually picked it up in the trailer, and um, yeah, and the rest is kind of history. So uh, I don't ride this bike much. I think I've ridden it maybe four or five times on the street. And I kind of rode it once at the track. Not very good at the track, but it was raining that day. So I didn't really get, I didn't really get a good run at it. But it's a bike that I'm actually still trying to get comfortable on because the ergonomics of the bike and the weight shifting of the bike and just the handling of the bike. I think I need to get some new tires on the bike to give me a little bit more confidence. These are older Q3s, so I think that they're a little bit harder than I like. I feel them moving around just a tad. So I'm gonna probably get some new tires on this, but I really wanna do get this uh, thing out for you guys for some more rides this summer. So comment down below and let me know if this is a bike that you guys like to see, I would really love to get this back out to Thunder Hill East for a track day to um, ride this thing because that's what it derives off of. So we'll stop up here at the dirt pile. We'll do uh, a quick little turnaround and I'll give you guys a little bonus ride back, see if I can get in the groove of things. But uh, I really, I really love this bike. I've always loved this bike and it's not a bike that, you know, this is a bike that I'm not gonna ride as much and I know that. Um, but on the flip side, I just love when I do ride it. So it's, it's super, super nice. So right now we are in the race dash. So the race dash gives us the shift indicator lights up there which we have dialed in. So as we start to get the revs up, it starts to tell me when to shift. The bike is actually relatively lightweight, just over 450 pounds, which really is actually, I think the stats on this wet is less than my BMW uh, S1000RR, which is kind of crazy to think, but this bike does have somewhat of a long wheelbase which makes it a little bit harder to turn. And it's a bit taller than uh, most sport bikes. But uh, let's get into a little bonus ride for you guys. Hopefully we can get a little sounds and crackles and pops out of this thing. But you guys know this is my favorite little spot. So see if we can get comfortable in this thing and make her sing.
right, guys, welcome back. So, uh, unlike some of the modern day bikes like the Street Fighter and the uh, V2 and the new Aprilia RS660, the traction control in 2010 and ABS was really just starting to come into fruition. And so the ABS and traction control on this bike is not settable. It's either on or off. So you just kind of deal with it. If it's too much ABS, you take it off. It's not enough ABS when you put it on, right? Uh, but traction control, you didn't have like, you don't have like traction control one or traction control two. You just have traction control. That's it. Uh, I don't think that there's any wheelie control on the bike. Or if there is, it's just on and it's just up or down, right? Um, it does have a quick shifter that is up only. Every once in a while we can blip it down, but uh, generally uh, it is on only. Uh, very cool, uh, two, what they call a 2D display. This bike for its time was really actually ahead of its time. Full carbon fiber bodywork, everything. The painted is carbon fiber. Uh, obviously they had to put the headlights, the mirrors and blinkers in there. And, uh, but outside of that in the tail light section, which actually unbolts and comes off, uh, all of the tight, uh, stainless exhaust comes through titanium uh, valve cover heads uh, Brembo massive Brembo brakes with uh, again this one does have the ABS model these came with or without ABS so I do have the ABS and uh, I think the ABS button is right here so you can actually turn that off on the fly uh, what they call cantilever suspension so the suspension actually isn't in the forks there's actually if you guys look there's actually a big shock down mounted to the frame and uh, the motor and actually works as a suspension uh, in the front end of the bike. It actually, the, the shock system actually doesn't absorb the shocks, the sh shock does. And also uh, Olin's uh, suspension all the way around. So it's a very cool bike. Let me know if you guys enjoy these kind of videos with this bike. And, and let me know if you guys enjoy um, these kinds of bikes. Is it something that you guys would like to see more ultra rares in the collection? Uh, let me know, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the ride on the 2010 BMW HP2 Sport. Uh, it's just such a lovely bike. I absolutely love it. But thanks for sticking around, and uh, we'll see you guys next video. Bye, guys.